things we're really interested in is looking at existing objects and then <coughs> repurposing them or taking aspects of an object and reimagining the way in which they might function or work in order to create a completely different or, or, or new interface. So. Yeah, so ideally, if you've never taken apart anything, it's a good chance today to rip it apart, <laughs> take it apart, and try to see how things work. And then um, there are a few th objects here, like um, some of the record players, for instance, that have moving parts. And so we wanted you to try to think about how you could integrate the moving aspect of it um, into something like an instrument yeah. that they'll connect. Yeah, so usually what we do though is, is we talk a little bit about ourselves, our background, but then we also have everyone in the room kind of uh, yeah. mention your name, um, maybe your background, what you think is interesting about the... <laughs> it's not very hard. Just why why you want to take the workshop? Because what it helps us do is it helps us understand, yeah. um, you know, any of what what information we need to cover, or maybe you know what other other things we can actually do. Since a lot of how this workshop unfolds is highly dependent upon um, your own interests and your sort of level of experience with electronics. So everybody works on their own project, or you can work together, but you pretty much work on what you want to work on, and, and we're, pretty, we're, we're here really to try to help you make things um, and to, to kind of assist you in, in any way. So a lot of what we do is self-directed or very interactive, mm -hmm. even in the process of building things, talking about what <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, yeah, yeah, you can. Anything. One, one idea is you can use three, yeah. and then put the motor in the middle, uh, and then you can put the pens in the middle down here. Okay. So you can get another cup if you want to change the design. This is just the basic design, but, but you're welcome to change it. <laughs> yeah, tape. So, starting. <laughs> starting. Oh, wow. <laughs> Great. Hmm? So, push the this back. Somebody wanted to change the design. Yeah, you could totally change the design. You're gonna change it. <laughs> Adjust. So one idea to do to change it is um you can use three cups like I'll show you like like this and then you can put the motor in the middle uh -huh. and, then, and then the pens here uh -huh. like three. <laughs> but any anything is what works. Yeah. Yeah. You can actually infinitely customize it. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> Oh, 
another one.
the kind of electricity that runs in our small electronic devices. So um, we don't need to go too much into the detail of the difference between the two, only knowing that what we're working with is direct current. Right. And when it comes to direct current, the way in which our electronic devices know that something is happening is really, really simple. It's basically, is there electricity present or is there no electricity present? It, it's really that ultimately all of the complex uh, operations that go into a computer and all of the ways in which the computer determines whether or not something is happening is basically it, 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 the, micro, the little, the little microcontrollers basically just look for electricity being connected to it. Does it see electricity there, or does it not see any electricity there? And it's actually, that's fundamentally what's going on. And so a lot of our workshop is not in doing the electronics, but in actually making the interface for the electronics. But in order for us to be able to determine whether or not something is happening, we go by that same principle. Is electricity present or is there no electricity present? When it comes to being able to detect whether or not there's electricity, one of the things you need to be able to do is actually um, conduct electricity, right? Because you can't tell if electricity is there or not unless you have something that can actually allow electricity to be transported. So what we do is we look at materials that actually conduct electricity. And most people are pretty familiar with wires conducting electricity, right? Everyone knows about, you know, they tell you not to touch them and stick it in the outlet, you know, stick it in the wall outlet, and then because you can electrocute yourself. But we're working with an electricity that is very small. It's only 5 volts. And uh, the amperage is also very low. So you can't hurt yourself with what we, what we do because the values of, are very, very small and they don't hurt people. But just by way of demonstration, yeah. you have this wire. And this wire is basically a conductor. It allows electricity to flow. And then we also have, around the, wrapped around the wire, mm -hmm. we have a little bit of plastic, right? This is an insulator. This doesn't allow electricity to flow. Yeah. Um, when you take two conductors and attach one end to a power source, attach the other end to a little pin on the microcontroller, like an actual physical little pin, right? A piece of metal on the Input, microcontroller. Yeah. And then both of those ends power on one end, microcontroller on the other, and the microcontroller <laughs> is looking, is there electricity? Connect the two conductors a little together, electricity comes up one end, goes into the microcontroller, and it can see that. Or, is there no electricity? Then you start asking yourself, oh, okay, what kind of aesthetic can you, can you give to a material that conducts electricity? Can you make that material um, out of something that you don't expect to be either hard or electronic? And so what we have here is some conductive fabric. And so this is a, actually a, it has a metal fiber content. You connect one of <laughs> <laughs> so whole thing conducts electricity. And if you were to take cool. a wire on one end, <laughs> right? Two separate pieces maybe, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, connect one to the wire, take the wire and tap it, you would have a um, switch. Switch. So even if I think I just hold this here. Yeah, this should work. <laughs> <laughs> connection mm -hmm. is one thing, but the actual experience then becomes something that is much, much more creative and much more interesting than that. So this is other conductive material we have, and it works slightly differently than this material because of the structure of the, of the uh, weave of the fabric. Mm -hmm. It only conducts on one axis, it only conducts one around. way. Um, here, this stuff <laughs> only connects this way, but not this way. Yeah. Because the, all the, the conductive uh, threads go only this direction and not this direction. So in order to make these work, what you have to do is actually turn them into a fabric patch. 
And I think I have some examples from other yeah. previous works. Yeah. And this is all junk that you guys can use. You can all, you know, yeah. set up and use it for scrap. Here's an example of a, of a good conductive panel. And this has taken two pieces of this fabric, one direction this way, one this way, with the conductive, conductive lines going this way, conductive lines going this way, and they're sandwiched together like this into a grid, and it's stitched down, and then you make a little, a little fabric patch which can actually work like this. <laughs> Thank you. 